The Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 57. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered. Nine months. Nine months from chapter 1, verse 23 and 24. So, 33 verses, 34 verses, 9 months. And you need to learn that because when you read your Bible, you've got to realize that the verses could be months, could be years, could be minutes, periods, colons, semicolons. Could be a difference between the church age, the first advent, and the second advent. When we read what Mary said, verses 45 to 56, it wasn't three months long, as we find in verse 56. She said all she said, and she stayed for three months. And it would help you, you say, what, what's this have to do with anything? It will help you study your Bible to realize the time frame. We're studying in church about David's sin with Bathsheba. Well, he's walking on a roof. He takes a look at the woman. He calls her in. They have an intimate love. She goes home. And the next verse, she gets word, I'm pregnant. Well, that takes three to four months to realize it wasn't the next day. Hi, Dave, I'm pregnant. No. A period in a, in a verse separates three to four months. When you read the Gospels, as we're reading and studying now, there may be vast time place. Or the end of one chapter will pick up right there in the next chapter. Or between the chapters, it could be days. And John tells us when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, there were much things than what we are reading today. He says the world cannot contain. If they wrote everything that Jesus done, it would be impossible for you to read the Bible through in one year. Now, we're not into dating. But Luke chapter 1 is more than nine months. Because you take the time that Zacharias is in the temple doing what he's supposed to be doing. An angel shows up. He's still got a, a couple more days. Then he goes home. His wife conceives. Well, that took three months to realize that she, for the news. Then the angel goes to Mary and says, Thou hast conceived with the Holy Ghost. And from that point to, to verse number... 56, now she's in her three months. 56 to 57, now we're in the ninth month of Elizabeth's time, and she brought forth a son. So Gabriel is a prophet. The angel is a prophet. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her. Remember, she was an old woman, like Sarah. And they rejoiced with her. Again, the blessing. It's a blessed event like Sarah. It's like when Leah names Asher, I believe it is. I'm going to name, I think it's Asher. I'm going to name him happy because the daughters will call me blessed. You have a new Bible Jewish event that started the Jewish life. A 90-year-old woman gives birth to Isaac. And thus you have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You have an old woman here. I don't think we, we did her age. And a priest. Who are faithful to the law, faithful to God, 
and are visited by an angel, not the angel of the Lord, but by an angel, and says, you're going to have a son. We're going to start a secondary foundation of the Jewish people. This foundation does not start the Jews. It starts the belief that here comes the foundation, Paul tells us in Corinthians, the Messiah, which is spoken of in Isaiah. And we'll get to all that. We'll get that this is the forerunner. And I'm going to show you a sign because Jews require a sign that here is an old woman who's giving birth to a young baby. And he turns out to be a spectacular baby that even Jesus said, a born of all women, there's none greater than John the Baptist. And that is who is born. Imagine the joy that Elizabeth and Sarah had. She makes it kind of like a little joke kind of thing. You know, shall I have pleasure with my husband? Shall my breast, uh, uh, you know, swallow a baby? Yep, it will. Imagine when, when her husband, Zacharias, came home and told her the news. Yeah, right. And how many times have you read Luke 1? I've got to sneeze. i got to apologize. <coughs> no, excuse me. And you didn't read Sarah. How many times have you gone through Genesis? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I mean, in, in 22, we see the Lord Jesus Christ on Mount Moriah, but we don't see the forecoming of John the Baptist through Sarah. It may not have been known the Jewish nation back in Abraham and Sarah's time. It should be known now. It should click some priest and Levite's ears. Oh, here's another old woman, which doesn't happen regularly, having a Jewish child. Come on. Did the Jews know that Jesus Christ was the Messiah? I believe so. If they were attained to the scriptures. He said, search the scriptures. I'm in them. I'm in what Moses wrote. John the Baptist is found in Isaiah. But Pilate said for envy. Because Jesus got the crowds. Moses got the crowds. They wanted to kill him. Water, food, water, food, food. Read, read it. Can't find more. Make a go, make a make a golden calf for us. Verse fifty nine. Verse fifty nine. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise a child. And they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. So the baby is born in 57, 58. 59, you've got to go to Jerusalem. We don't get into it now, but we'll get into it with Mary. You're going to run into it. We'll get into this great detail in Luke chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. You're going to have a period of time for a woman that gives birth to a son. She's unclean up to the eighth day. She's going to bring her son to the temple to be circumcised the eighth day. After the eighth day, guess what? She's unclean, can't touch nothing for a period of 33 days. Forty days, thereabouts. We'll get into it later. We'll get it with Mary. We'll look at it. She's unclean. All right, let's read. Now Elizabeth full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. Her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they called his name Zacharias at the name of his father. His mother answered, No, not so. Uh, 
Let's see. Where his father speaks in verse 80, and the child grew. But well, we missed the entire time of his mother being unclean. And boom, the child grows. Well, what kind of baby was he? What kind of adolescent was he? Did he have a terrible twos? Or what? But that's the time frame. I want to get off that now. Now the law, the eighth day for a Jewish child. And they say, and they're refuting it now because it, because it goes with the Bible, they're refuting that the eighth day that the child has built up so much in his system, a male child, that on the eighth day when circumcision is done, there is no, if not very little pain. Oh, risk, of risk of infection, excuse me. Circumcision today, it's your option. Is it a religious? No. With the childbirth that, that we had, we talked with the doctor. We talked about circumcision and we talked about uncircumcision. And listening to the doctor, we cleanliness that circumcised the child. There is a mode of not doing circumcision and of cleaning and, and risk. So it's healthier to have circumcision. But for a Jewish, it was to mark he's Jewish. Paul, I believe, takes Silas and has him circumcised. Because he says the Jews were spying on them. Uh -huh, look at that. He ain't circumcised. He ain't one of us. Kind of perverted, right? They were, they were looking in Daniel's window. Uh, what are you doing? Well, Timothy was Jewish. Timothy was already as far as Jews, but Silas, he, he's taken along, and I, I believe it's Silas or, or Paul. He actually has him circumcised. And maybe Timothy, too, on another count. It was a sign that God gave to Abraham. Ishmael was 13 years old when he was circumcised. And he says, anybody in your house, whether it be born of you or bought with a, with a price by you, if it's not circumcised, be cut off. On this eighth day, eight mean a new beginning. Seven complete, eight. A child is circumcised, a male child, and then he's naming. And if you go back to Sarah. If you go back to Leah, you go back to when Rachel's about to die, the handmaid says, don't worry, I shall give birth to a son, and she names him Benoni. They are named by the woman. Another thing, too, is for the Jewish people, they don't name the child to after the child's born. Now, you, they named the child Esau. He was red. Red baby. Jacob is named Sir Planter. Well, did he get that name later on in life? Deborah, named B. Why? And you can have a lot of speculation. They don't name a child before. They name the child after. She names him Zacharias after the father. They called his name Zacharias after the name of his father. The father can't speak. Not yet. When you see with Leah, Rachel, and Boaz, the people around Naomi named the baby.
different custom from what we have. Now, before the law, this covenant, let's look at Genesis 17 now. Let's look at the covenant. And, you know, we looked at how fast time can be in Genesis 17. And it is. Two or three verses in Genesis 1, and even in the morning we're one day. And even in the morning was the second day. And even in the morning was the third day. But here's something else that you got to read your Bible. 9, 4, 17, 9. And God said to Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. So again, Zacharias and Elizabeth are obeying the covenant of Abraham. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee. John the Baptist is of the seed. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. Now come on, you think Abraham really wanted to hear that from God? You want me to do what? Really. And this is called out by God to one man and his seed. Betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old, look at that, they obeyed, eight days old, shall be circumcised among you every man child in your generation. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger. That could be Gentiles. Which is not of thy seed. That's an interesting thing. That this falls of anybody who is of the seed or bought. You know, I'm bought by a man that is under the seed of Abraham. I am paid for by a man of the seed of Abraham. I have been redeemed by a man of the seed of Abraham. And we're going to see that coming up with Mary. We'll see that with, with Joseph, Matthew 1. You know, I've been spiritually, spiritual, circumcised, not physical, I've been physical, but spiritual, circumcised. My flesh is not attached to my, my soul. I'm in with Abraham. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant and an uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people he has broken my covenant and God said unto Abraham as for Sarai thy wife thou shalt not call her name Sarai but Sarah shall be her name I will bless her and Verse 20, And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, will make him fruitful, and will multiply his multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he begat. Okay, they're of, uh, of Abram. Of the seed that he begat. In verse 23, Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin, in the same in the self same day as God had said unto him. And Abraham was ninety years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. 
and Ishmael his son were thirteen years old when he, his circumcision and his flesh of his foreskin. In the self same day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael his son. Ishmael thirteen, rebellion. Thirteen's rebellion. But it happens. And here we see that Elizabeth is doing what God had told Abraham for this covenant. They are proper. 21.4. Genesis 21.4. Now, this doesn't remind them of Sarah in her old age, Abraham being 99 years old, 21.4. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac being eight days old, as God had commanded him. All right, so Isaac is done proper, the eight days. Now, Leviticus 12.1. Now, we're going to see that they obey the law. Leviticus 12.1. And we'll get into it again with Mary, but and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days according to the days of separation of her infirmity. Shall she be unclean? We'll, we'll talk about this later with Mary. And in the eighth day. The flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. So she obeys the, Ab the Abrahamic covenant that God said. And she obeys the law. That's in the law. For the Jews. Back to Luke. And they're doing everything right. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. Now, how does she know? Is it something that Zacharias wrote to her? Was it inspiration? Because they say, Hey, name him Zacharias. That's the father's name. She just right away instantly. No, John. It is inter in intervention by the mother. Look at Luke 141. And it shall come to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. It had to have been done, too. She could not shut her mouth. In verse 13 of chapter 1, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. Thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. She could not not speak up. She had to. Now what damage do we do as Christians when we're called to speak up for something that is right and do not. What if she just kept her mouth shut? All right, just name him Zacharias. Then the angel would have been a liar. But the Bible says. In verse 6, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord blameless. When it comes even to naming a child, we're going to obey the law, we're going to be righteous before God, and God said, John, John it will be. Now don't you know that some of those people in that group maybe got upset? Who do you think you are telling me what not to name the child? All our sons have been named that. And that's one of the things in my family. The boys that were named were named for 
the men of the family. Styley being named my grandfather and William, which was a, a, one of my great great grandfathers. There's that thing, you know, you, you name in the family. She's breaking up because they say unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. Now let, let, let's read it right there. Right? Verse 59. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. They called his name Zacharias. After the name of his father. Isn't that a great name? Yeah, it's a great name. And his mother answered and said, No, no, not so. But his name shall be John. There is no name in your family named John. What are you talking about, woman? She went against the flow. Zachariah, he's a good priest. He's faithful. And everybody just loves him. Who is named John? You know, up to now, you've never seen the name John? Find me in the Old Testament the name John. You say, well, I find it in Matthew. <laughs> it's not the Old Testament. Well, it's the Old Testament. Jonathan, but that's... No one by John that day. Who was named John? They sure weren't thinking Jonathan. Who was the child named for? There was no one in their family named John. So, and they made signs. Jesus saves. Now, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They made signs. See, they're, they're in the Bible. Signs. Sign ministry. They made signs to, the, to his father. You notice how they, they approached the father when it comes to the name last. Well, we've got a controversy now. Let's go to the father. How, how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table. And wrote saying, his name is John. And they marveled all. Now, they did not bring him a table. We call it a tablet. And we're going to look at that in a minute. It's called for a writing tablet, a paper. He can't speak. He has not been able to speak for the nine months and more than eight days. We don't know how many days it took for him to get home and for her to conceive. We know it's nine months and eight days, but it's more than that. So, about this, this tab, look at Exodus 24.12. Just so you know what to mean. I mean, you go and go in the store, Exodus 24.12. You can go in the stationery of, of a drugstore, and you can find a writing tablet. What's wrong with that? The Bible can say it. Exodus 24, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there. And I will give thee the tables of stone. Now, when you see the, the, the thing of the table, you know, you know, Moses ain't carrying down these tablets and they got four legs in each of them. It's a tablet. Um, 32.16. I may, this may be a typo. 32.16. But this, we'll just move on. All right, 32.16. The law. The tables were the work of God. The writing was the writing of God graved upon the tables. That's what he's calling for. Bring me something to write on. 34.1 The Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone, like unto the first. And I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first table, which thou breakest. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3 3. So he's asking for a piece of paper, something to write on. 
They're making signs. I mean, that's the first sign language. And he's like, uh, I don't understand what you're saying. Give me a pen and paper. 2 Corinthians 3 3 says, For as much as ye are manifest declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. We're written of the heart. Writing. The word of God is to be our heart. Like Zacharias called for something to be written. So they question the Father. Verse 64. And his mouth was opened. Finally. Immediately. Isn't that funny immediately? Nine months and eight days at least. Immediately. Because when, when, remember that big discussion you need to go back and get into? We really got into about that angel being where no man was supposed to be. He did not believe what the angel told him. Told him. So he says, thou shalt be done and thou will not be able to speak. Again, Gabriel has the power of God and he has the power of prophecy. Fulfilled now. The baby's baby was conceived the baby's born the baby's name is John and the father now speaks the dumbness is gone immediately that's a long immediately Gabriel has done 100 percent accuracy And after nine months and eight days, his mouth was open immediately and his tongue loose, and he spank and praised God. Verse 63 says, and he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, his name is John. He wrote, his name is John. He did not speak that. And they went, what on earth? And then next thing you know, his mouth is loose. This guy who can't, who has come out of the tabernacle, has come out of the holy place, has come out, and I believe they said he asked for, made signs to him. Um... It says, verse 22, when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. Well, here they're making signs to him. He doesn't know. And the mouth is finally loosed. And fear came on all. That dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were noise about aboard throughout all the hill country country of Judea. The Gab session. And all they that heard them laid them in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost. And you go back to verse number 41. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Here Zacharias is being filled with the Holy Ghost and there's no Mary around. Can I, can I say that? John the Baptist is finally filled with the Holy Ghost now when he can get a word in his life. Well. 
For three months he couldn't say nothing with Mary and Jesus in her womb while they were while she was in their house. He couldn't say a word through forty six to what would you leave? Fifty six. He couldn't say one word. He couldn't even comfort his wife in her birth. He could not say push. He had to have a sign. <laughs> They named the child. The mother speaks up. He calls for a writing tablet. He says his name is John, and now his mouth is loose. And the question is, and we'll get into it next time, Lord willing. If your mouth was loosed from being not able to speak for nine months and at least eight days, Who would get the praise? God, man, or self? Nine months, the minimum eight days, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Everything's been about God. Everything's about, been about the Lord God, and everything has been fulfilled by Israel, the law, and the prophets. You can't say God is done with Israel. No, he's not. He just put them aside. John the Baptist. Now get this. I don't want to be cruel. I don't want to be harsh. But the operation that they just performed on the little baby boy and calling him a name has sparked fear and gossip and that the Lord has finally spoken to Israel after 400 years of silence the Lord has done something to me and this this nation that is his the Lord is now coming to us look at this great thing in this child you don't think they went back and run into the scriptures Here's this old woman having a baby. Well, that sounds so familiar. Now here God has worked in a little baby. Now what Mary says in 46 to 56 is between her, Elizabeth, and Zacharias. And he can't speak. What the Father is going to say, what we're going to pick up next week, Lord willing. When it starts off, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, verses 68, down to 79. He is speaking to a group of people, probably family, friends of the neighbors, friends of the family, those of the Judea area of the hill country. He is preaching to them and prophesying that after 400 years coming out of a Levite mouth who was offering incense to God, who answered his prayer, 400 years, the silence has been broken. God is speaking. And don't you think that there is a whoop la and celebrations and, and feasting now happening?
And then this child is going to go to be a regular child. And he's got to yet grow up. And again, there's silence. I believe that uh, there, Jesus and John the Baptist, it's, it's three months, I believe, they're separate from each other. All right. The child grew, verse 80, waxed strong in spirit. You've got another 30 years before God starts to work. 30 years, this child's got 30. Does a child go into the ministry, into the office of the priesthood? John's ministry of preaching. Okay? Six months later, then Jesus shows up and begins his ministry. See how time's important? We've got a, they've got a glance. The Lord's doing something. Yay! And then 30 years goes by. And they re they re react to that. Six months comes by. John the Baptist baptizes the Messiah. He begins his ministry. Oh, wait a minute. After his baptism, 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus is taken away to the wilderness. At 40 days of that. For the full work of, the, of, of what's going on between Luke 1... You've got 30 years, 40 days, and 6 months. I'm talking right after, after the wilderness, when Jesus is tempted by Satan and all that, and the angels come and minister him, and he, he goes walking, and he, starts, and he starts grabbing his disciples, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew. 30 years. 60, that's six months and 40 days from this time. And what you got to ask yourself, these people here that are in Judea in the hill country, do they walk with Jesus when he begins his ministry are they hey here we go here it is or are they he's not coming no more nothing's gonna happen anymore you got to wonder that's what time is so from that to from Luke 1 to, to chapter 3 We've been about 30 years. Jesus is baptized in Luke 3. And verse 23 says, Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. So between Luke 2, when Jesus is born, and Luke chapter 3, 30 years. What am I trying to say? God has patience. When we don't. God is in no hurry. Absolutely no hurry at all.